Hey everyone, and welcome to the Magical Miracle Network. My name is Ruth Perkinson, and I'm very excited to have a special guest with us here today. Her name is Denise O'Brien, and she is coming all the way to us from Shannon, Ireland. Um, and she has just recently subscribed to our channel, and we talked a little bit last week, and she has an amazing story about her journey to A Course in Miracles. And this is one thing we've been doing the last month or so is bringing people on and talking about their journey to A Course in Miracles. So Denise O'Brien, God bless you, and welcome to the Magical Miracle Network. Hi, Ruth, and thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited, and I'm glad this is materialized. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it sure has materialized, and it was great because you reached out, and I knew, honestly, oh. those Holy Spirit moments, I knew right away when you were emailing me that this was something important to really, you know, connect with you and have a talk. So we're just going to kind of launch right in and talk for about 20 years. 25 minutes yeah. about your spiritual journey to A Course in Miracles. Because what I'm finding on these testimonials, these um, chats, is that a lot of us have an amazing story. So we're just going to pick up wherever you feel like you want to pick up and talk mm -hmm. about, you know, where you are, where you're from, where you're going, and how you got there. Okay. Okay, great. Well, First of all, I have to say, I love what you're doing with this channel because it's like, as you said there, it's like testimony from, you know, some some people are probably more high profile, like spiritual teachers, quote unquote, but like I love spirituality for the everyday person, you know, and that was something that I felt I had a calling to do when I was reaching out to you. There was something inside me saying just contact her you know and it's time for you to kind of tell and share your story Denise you know so um yeah I felt that even though my head kicked in it was like so what you're contacting somebody to tell them that you want to talk about yourself <laughs> and I was like <laughs> yeah okay but anyway we, we got over that so yeah thank you <laughs> yes we uh, we so, overcame that obstacle didn't we <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, I'm from Ireland. I'm from Shannon in the west of Ireland in the beautiful, we, it's called Along the Wild Atlantic Way. Um, so we're on this on the rugged west coast of Ireland onto the Atlantic Ocean, which isn't too far from here. Um, so I love, it's beautiful, like the landscape, the land, the, the land around here is amazing, you know, and I really feel a beautiful connection with that. Um, and I'm living in my hometown where I grew up. Um, I, I'm living alone at the moment, but I, I have a daughter who's an adult and uh, I have a partner who we, we, we live separately at the moment anyway. So I, I do have a nice amount of time to myself in my little house, which is nice. Um, so, yeah, I guess <laughs> spirituality and everything like that, like for me, I I. I'm fortunate I can say that now, but I, I didn't think so when I was like 19 years of age, when I was having, you know, a very dark kind of time in my life. And uh, yeah, there was a lot going on for me, like emotionally, mentally, um, and I was doing things to excess in my life, you know, as a lot of young people do. Yes. Um, yeah. So I got to a point where I actually very similar to what's said in the course I realized okay there has to be another way something happened for me I think I had a looking back now it felt kind of miraculous you know I was in a place like one day and I just went to pick up the phone at the time and rang a local group like that I know would would have been of help to me and it kind of went from there like I just that wasn't not in my head when I woke up that day. It was something that came to me when I was just sitting there with somebody who had no idea what was going on in my head. You know, I picked up the yellow pages at the time, the phone book. It was before mobile phones. You know, I rang this number that I'd seen, you know, and I kind of went from there, you know, and that was a long time ago now. Um, so, yeah, yeah. It sounds like you had that seminal moment, like you had 
it almost feels like, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, you had like a light switch kind of went on. You were in this place and just mm-hmm. something said, something's got to change. Is that what yeah. I'm hearing? Yeah, like it was literally, I can still remember. I can still remember that day. Like, I mean, it was, it was 1997, I think. And uh, I, I remember, I remember the day, you know, and I remember picking up the phone. Um, so something came to me to do that, you know, just do that, do that. You know, you need to do this now. Right. And, you know, I truly believe that that saved my life because the way I was going and the way I was living my life, um, it, it was going to be a case of like live fast, die young kind of thing. And, you know, I mean, thank God that's not the way my life has turned out. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I guess, you know, when I started out on my journey, then it was all about trying to find a different way to live, you know, still be in this world as a young person um, and trying to find a way to be at peace with myself. You know, that was that was my key goal, you know, and that sounds lovely and easy and it rolls off the tongue very nicely. But that has taken me decades, <laughs> decades of work and right. help and support and talking and various spiritual practices and teachers and, you know, including the course, which I came to much later, you know, only in the last, you know, three, three, four years, um, the course came to me, right. you know, so. So can I stop year. you right there yeah. just for a second? Yeah, just, yeah. I just wanted to ask you, um, So you have this sort of seminal moment, which I think, you know, a lot of people sometimes get there and they're like, this is not going well, like I'm whatever I'm doing, you know, and I know that's happened to me where I'm like, wait a minute, I'm doing way too much of this, way too much of that. I'm kind of like, you know, just spending, spending, sort of spinning my wheels. Right. And, um, and then I think, you know, a lot of people think there's got to be something like Bill and Helen, you know, they were like, there's got to be another way, like this is not working. And so after you had sort of that seminal moment, you know, it's 25 years ago, it sounds like about uh, 20, 25 years ago uh, ish. um, Mm -hmm. Then what was like after you kind of got some support, what was the the, some of the books that you started reading or some of the the spirituality? What were some of the 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 people you started to find? Can you sort of touch on? Yeah. So initially, I mean, I was Emmett Fox and his books were recommended to me. Um, like I, I had a lot of help from a man who has passed away now onto his maker. Um, and he, he taught me, he was just a a seemingly a regular person, um, but kind of took me under his wing and taught me about a loving God, which I knew nothing about, you know? Um, and he recommended all these books to me, um, like Emmett Fox, as I said, the Sermon on the Mount. Um, until I be, I was, I became teachable, you know, and then I started to pick up my own stuff like um, Eckhart Tolle. Um, got into Muji a, a big bit into into um my twenties, my thirties. So you know, non dual kind of teaching came my way um over the years. But you know, going back to when I was young and in my twenties, and my friend was trying to you know give me back some hope into my life and some self worth, you know, because I, I came from a place of really being very disappointed with myself. Um, you know, there was a lot going on when I was younger and uh, my yeah. mom was, was sick and she passed eventually, you know, and I just had a lot of guilt and shame as a young woman, you know, and that was something I had a really hard time dealing with. And this man and other people, helped me to they kind of loved me back to life you know and they they did that for me until I could do it for myself wow that's that's really incredible it's like a shout out to them that they it was kind of like you had some aunties and uncles that came around you in a sense they were able to really um give you sort of more of a blueprint on how to live life can I ask you a quick question um were you raised uh catholic or um, and did you have some of that that you were wrangling with as well, or was that not part of it? 
yeah well yeah in ireland you know pretty much all a lot of us the most of us are <laughs> um, irish roman catholic and yeah like without realizing it you do grow up listening to the messages of you know guilt and sin and sinfulness and not being worthy you know um now i my generation was probably like the first generation in ireland to kind of really break free from the grip of the catholic church you know so when i was growing up it, you didn't have to go to mass like we did but then eventually it was it was okay not to go to mass it was okay not to go to church whereas the pre like my parents when they were growing up that wouldn't have been the case you know right, right. um it felt so, like there was a yeah. sense of a little sense of maybe cultural rebellion a little bit with the younger generation is that yeah you know and yeah it is definitely it's stem like it started there and obviously look it's completely moved another complete taken another 180 since then but like yeah so yeah well we did grow up catholic it wasn't like we were at home saying the rosary um there were some houses that probably did that but not in my house you know it was fairly liberal and you know, and my parents are good people, you know, they, they came from working class backgrounds. They tried to give me and my brother everything they didn't have, you know, like, you know, proper full education and whatnot. And but I always felt there was something missing, you know, there was something I was looking for. There was something I was searching for. Um, And I was looking in all the wrong places for for a long time, you know, and even coming into the world of spirituality. You know, eventually when it came to this non-dualism and, you know, all these other teachers, it was like I began the spiritual search, <laughs> you know, like yeah. what what am I? I'm looking for this thing. I need to fix myself. I need to find something, you know. Yeah. Um, And I love, you know, I think there's uh, one of one of Muji's teachers, um, Papa G, actually. I think he wrote a book or at least he has a talk called call off the search, you know, call it off. Yeah. There is no, there is no search needed, you know, and, you know, I'll talk a bit about the course in a minute, but like I've gone back to a lot of the non-dual teachers in the last six months, say, and they just embellish the course for me. It's like, it's like everybody's, they're all saying the same thing, Yeah, you know, about this one oneness you know this non-separation um so i find it all much easier to listen to now because i guess you know i'll, I'll talk a, a bit about my experience of coming to the course because it was quite um intense um for me you know so so i suppose i had that grounding in spirituality i mean i was i i prayed a lot i i developed a really strong faith in God, a God that of my own understanding, you know, not not a religious God. I didn't go back to mass or church. Yeah. You know, I I meditated. I spent time in the local Buddhist monastery at different times. I did different retreats. I was like a free flowing, you know, spiritual. Yeah, she <laughs> were being whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like that. And really, um, interesting that I think you had, and this, I think we can bring this forward a little bit more about how oftentimes we are looking for that person, whether it be a priest or a spiritual guru or whoever it might be to give us all of the wisdom. And I think what we're finding out now is we already have that, right? We already have the yeah. wisdom within us and we just have to sort of unpack it for ourselves. Is that part yes. of what I'm hearing from you? absolutely you know and i i still when i came to the course like i again it was this other kind of fortuitous uh, series of events where i had booked onto this workshop in the a town near me it was a lady who was coming to town to teach a course in miracles you know years prior to that i had the book i bought it and i gave it away because i looked at it and tried to read it and went no you know, and I'd heard like, you know, Wayne Dyer talking about it, Eckhart Tolle talks about it. Yeah. I knew about it, but I wasn't obviously ready for it. Um, but I booked onto this workshop and I went in and another friend of mine gave me her book because she didn't want her book. So I brought her book, which I still have here. <laughs> and I went on, yeah, went on this 
half day workshop with this woman and I, I, I left the session with my friend and I can't, she went to do an errand and I said, I'm going to start these lessons, whatever she's talking about. So I, I started on lesson one that day, you know, and that was like, that was early 2020, just before the pandemic hit. Um, and within the next month, like the relationship I was in went away, the pandemic hit, my work stopped, like, and this breakup was, was, was gruesome. You know, it was just a complete collapse of everything I believed about myself, really just died with that relationship. Oh, is this a breakup you had with uh, somebody you were seeing? Is that? Yeah, at the time. Yeah. So, so when I got to the course, every like within a month i would say the whole world as i knew it had fallen down in front of in front of my eyes it's funny when i look back now but back then i it wasn't funny you know i was in i was in the probably even you know all through my life you know i mean you know losing my mom losing friends to suicide and dealing with all the things i dealt with you know as a single parent and all that I don't think anything topped that level of pain, confusion, depression that came at that point in my life, just about when I found the course, you know? So, like, I do that's, think that's important. You know? Yeah. Denise, I'm just going to stop you there for a second. It's so well said that you're bringing, this is like, it almost sounds like you were having, for lack of better words, a sort of a dark night of the soul right there. And luckily you have this information in front of you and you started to it sounds like you started to practice it as yeah. you were going through this okay go ahead yeah yeah I did and you know within a very short while I found um David Hoffmeister on YouTube and I I was at home most of the time um nursing myself from this broken heart and all this anger like this rage was coming up like I mean hot rage like I could I woke up angry I went to sleep angry I, I anytime I talked to my friends I told them I was angry you know <laughs> I had rage everywhere and I, <laughs> I, just, I went I remember I joined one of David's um retreats like they do weekends ones you can join them online and um it was it was weird as well because it was time zone was different so I went to bed and woke up to go on this retreat it was two in the morning or three and I can't remember but anyway but I was so angry like I was just so angry and I remember being in this group zoom thing or whatever and I just said typed in you know I'm I feel angry they'd ask people and then the whole the whole theme of the room was that everybody was angry and he did the whole retreat on anger you know, and he picked a movie, like they watch movies, they do this movie watching thing, all about the theme of anger, you know, but I remember, you know, one of the teachers saying, like, you're angry because you're separate from God, and you're angry at God, you know, which is, I suppose, what the course kind of teaches, and I was like, no way like there's no way that's not why I'm angry like there's no way I love God you know I'm I have I used I had this really deep relationship with God so I thought well I did you know I had it but just a, this is a different level of understanding right you know and it's taken me a long time to understand in my own way you know what that means like and why that is yeah true that's you know? so important to I think ta distinguish too with the Course in Miracles is that it's 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 really written on a couple of different levels, you know, the level of the mind, which is where, um, where he's really, really helping us to retrain our minds. And then also uh, the practical yeah. level of being in the world and where we are here and then sort of the level of source or God. So there's really a couple things going on there. Yeah. And, um, and we, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I, 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 loved the course from the minute I, I had it you know it was almost like I remember when I when I had my daughter and I gave birth to her and I remember like when I got to hold her properly like after the whole labor was over and I just fell in love with her you know I just had this and I cried and like there was something about the course like where for me like I remember 
being in real like real emotional turmoil you know and lying there I would like listening to David out of my phone who I ended up listening to I'd say for about eight hours straight every day for I don't even know how long but I can remember hearing the you know nothing real can be threatened nothing unreal exists herein lies the peace of God you know he he I heard him saying that and it it just it was just me and his voice in my room it was probably dark I was probably not able to sleep and that just pierced it pierced my soul like it pierced my heart you know it just I knew this was the truth even though I didn't logically understand what that means you know right. nothing unreal exists like what does that even mean but I knew I knew it like mm. my whole being knew this is the truth you know yeah, let's if we can let's stop right there for people who are new to the course and or people who are coming in to watch this. Um, what Denise is referring to there, which is an important piece, is there's uh, the summary of a course in miracles is that you know nothing real can be threatened. And what Jesus, who is the voice of the course, is teaching us is that the real part is our spirit. The real part is love. The real part is God. And that none of that can ever be threatened in any way, shape or form, which I think is so cool, right? Is uh -huh. you can sort of take that word real and insert the word heaven, insert the word God, um, spirit, and that's eternal, that's forever. That's that beautiful uh -huh. divinity within us that nothing can threaten that at all. And that the unreal part, you know, nothing unreal <clears throat> exists meaning that uh, the body, you know, meaning anything really in form that anything ephemeral, anything short lived um, is, is not real. And, um, and that doesn't really exist. And it really is a high level summary. It's a two liner. And then herein lies the peace of God, but you're right. It gives you this like just swath and there you are. And it just makes you feel, I think it really, helps us just to feel comforted knowing that um, we we have this immortal part of us and the ephemeral part of us is something that we're undoing, we're letting go uh, yeah. here, day to day. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like I went on, you know, listening, listening to David, I went, to, you know, I traveled to Mexico, traveled to Spain, went to a couple of spiritual communities and retreats. You know, I really... I mean, I did the 365 lessons twice over, you know, and, you know, and then I just, I kind of, I stopped and I took a break, you know, I came back from all my travels. um, And then eventually I started listening like, back, but I was listening to Ken Wapnick and I was listening to Keith Kavanagh. He's an Irish teacher um, based here in Ireland, but they're teaching the way of the course you know, through Ken's way of teaching. Yeah. And I think, you know, that brought me into a whole other level of learning, you know, as well about the course and what is what is actually teaching me that nothing unreal exists. You know, it's that's the highest level of spirituality, you know, that we can attain, you know, is is understanding that, you know, none of this actually exists you know none of it is real i i am not there i have not had a you know a sense of enlightenment you know and i i struggled with that for a long time with the course especially coming to it with so much emotional turmoil you know and somebody who had seemingly done me a whole lot of wrong you know and trying to do the forgiveness forgiveness of your brother your brother is basically you you know an extension of you mm -hmm. you know I so what is what has helped me is to listen just listen more to that kind of teaching and and understand that yeah there is you know a part of uh, us that is that is eternal as you said mm -hmm. it's not it's not in this body you know it's not it's not this person Denise you know it's beyond that and that becomes very difficult to explain you know and anyone outside of the course this is where they kind of go where this is a whole load of woo woo, woo you know what I mean like it's 
I don't try to explain this to anybody. I tend to keep quiet and just allow this to be because I know what I have experienced mm -hmm. and I know that is true and I know what's true for me. Yeah. You know. And that brings up a great point. I think, you know, that the a Course in Miracles is a self-study program. It's not a religion. It's not meant to be anything else but a self-study for anyone who's interested. You don't even have to tell anybody you're doing it. Um, yeah. But if it yeah. truly resonates with you and you've really been looking for the answer as to why this world feels so off, it feels so dense, you know, we have these agreements with sickness and guilt and death, and we're made to think that they're normal and they're not. And yeah. um, he's really teaching us in the course that, you know, none of those things are true. There's a belief in them, of course, but they're not true. And it really gave me such comfort. Honestly, I'll just ask you, right. when I got to lesson 14, and of course, in miracles, I've been through it a bunch of times. And, you know, and it says, you know, God did not create that airplane disaster. God did not create that tsunami. God did not create you know, mm -hmm. all the destruction and the war, um, that's not who God is. God is not a punishing God. And in fact, God knows nothing of the dream of separation. Um, and I I was like, what? <laughs> you know, I was like, that's super cool. So that it gave me like, it, it was finally, it was relieving because I thought if God knew about this, why doesn't he come in and correct it? Yeah. Um, and so that really, really was where, for me personally, where the rubber met the road. And I was like, finally relieved that God did not create death. God did not create separation. God did not create guilt. God did not create yeah. fear, you know, and that it was the ego um, that had miscreated that, you know, and there's no judgment there. There's really just this power I feel like we have knowing that the ego thought system is responsible for what's happened. And that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then and we can use the miracle of forgiveness and love to shift out of that and use the Holy Spirit's interpretation who's mediating between the illusion of this world to the truth of giving us that spiritual vision, you know, which is, I feel like yeah. what's happening with you, you're, you're sort of like stepping into your own uh, spiritual vision. Yeah, I know. I, I do feel that. And it's hard to explain it or put it into words and, you know, like one of the hard parts for me when I went on the next level of learning with the course was to realize, yeah, God doesn't, if we go by the teachings of the course, which gave me a lot of comfort as well, you know, that God, God didn't actually create the world at all. Yeah. You know, that, but that God doesn't know about me. You know, I had to, um, I, I, my ego really had a hard time. I really got disappointed and upset over that. It was like <laughs> this, this person, you know, is part of the dream, but, I, so I worked through a lot of confusion, difficulty, questions, resistance, you know, res and just, and I still have, no, not as, not as strongly anymore, like, but because the practice of, you know, what I learned from teachers like Ken, and especially Keith, is that all you have to do is just notice this insane voice in your head, as Keith would say that, you know, just notice it and don't judge it. You know, and then you are separate. You are not that. And that is what all of the non-dual teachers have been teaching. And I've been listening to um, Nisagar Data, Nisagar, I can't pronounce his name ever, but all the old Indian gurus, like I absolutely love their teachings. They're so clear. They, they're teaching exactly what's in the course. Like we're, we're, we're all on the same page, you know, and it's, you know, I am not that, like we're not, that you know we are something else and that's where i get comfort because you your ego the ego's worst fear is is non-existence you know right. and when we're identified with that it and and thinking what you're telling me i don't exist you know and that's 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 preposterous you know i'm here i'm i have this body like i'm i'm real yeah. you know and that's the 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 the, Ill, the highest piece of illumination or wisdom you know and I still have to just allow that to be in my life and allow that to settle and allow myself to soak that up you know because yeah. if I try to try and figure it out with my mind it just yeah it doesn't work you know yeah. 
So yeah, I really um so to your point, you know, what I what I helped me, and I'll just sort of ping off of you a little bit here, is that yeah. is that um that this ephemeral body um uh, won't be here forever, but the spiritual beingness inside of me is what is forever. And yeah. so when I so I just know that we're dreaming and that I kind of pull the lens back and recognize that the spiritual beingness inside of me is true. So I replace that illusory thought, the, you know, the body thought with, yeah. and I really have to replace it. Otherwise it'll kind of make you depressed. She's like, Oh, what do I mean? Yeah. So I, I'm a spiritual being. And so the same spiritual essence of me is the same spiritual essence in you. Mm-hmm. And that's the reason our minds and hearts are joined in the sonship, that we are um, the sonship and we are all one together. And I think that's really cool. So the same love and light and peace that's inside of my heart and mind is the same love and light and peace that's inside of you. So we can look at the ego and go, yeah, that's, you know, these things are true. We get it now. And then we, repl- I feel, I replace it with the idea that I am an eternal spirit. I'm whole. I'm innocent. Uh-huh. And so is Denise yeah. O'Brien. Because she's awesome. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's it ties into the piece from the course that I wanted to read before yes. we finish up. Um, so lesson 189 is, I think, my favorite piece in the whole book. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to read this because this gave me great comfort when I read certain parts of it and it's, it kind of goes along with what we're talking about here um so we have the what's the I, title just, of the lesson again yeah it's I feel the love of God within me now so there's just a few small pieces of the lesson I want to read um so the, the opening piece is you know pretty powerful um there is a light in you the world cannot perceive And with its eyes, you will not see this light, for you are blinded by the world, yet you have eyes to see it. It is there for you to look upon. It was not placed in you to be kept hidden from your sight. This light is a reflection of the thought we practice now. And then, you know, there's a whole... There's a whole lot else written there about that, but I just come into the, the, the kind of end stages of the lesson. You know, there's the beautiful paragraph. So simply do this. Be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is. All concepts you have learned about the world. All images you hold about yourself. Empty your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false or good or bad. Of every thought it judges worthy and all the ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought the past has taught nor one belief you ever learned before from anything. So forget this world, forget this course and come with holy empty hands unto your God. And finally, then, this is the piece that I think is just mind blowing. So is it not he who knows the way to you? You need not know the way to him. Your part is simply to allow all obstacles that you have interposed between the son and God, the father to be quietly removed forever. You know, and that brought me to tears so many times because I felt so lost in this world for a long time. And I used to pray, you know, please like help me, please take this pain away, please fix this, please. You know, when I read this, it was like, oh God, like I was never alone, you know, I was never deserted. And it was always there, but we just, we have to we have to just allow ourselves to to see that you know so it's a it's a beautiful lesson I really appreciate you bringing that up it's a powerful lesson because he's really saying let go of everything let go of this course even right let go of this world 
let go of everything um, because we really forgot that we created a substitute or miscreated a substitute reality that seems separate from God, which is the whole cosmology, the whole hologram of time and space. Yeah. And once you understand that in your system, then yeah. it does give us great hope and great power to recognize that, hey, we've, we've got this information now and now we can use it and take responsibility and have the willingness to wake ourselves up from separation to unity. And that feels like what you're doing, Denise, and you're so clear. Um, you've got, you've had some dark nights of the soul. You've been dabbling with the different course teachers. I think Ken Wapnick is one of my favorites. Um, oh. I really, I can, I, it sounds like the one you found in Ireland is, is great as well. And uh, yeah. so I appreciate him for what he's done and David Hoffmeister for his, you know, uh, putting all that information out there to help. Because yeah. at, the, at the end of the day, we really are all the same in this beautiful spirit that we are. And we're all innocent and we're all worthy. And sure. what we're really going for is the end game, which is to wake up from the unreal world of separation into the real world. And the Holy Spirit is providing us that gateway, that bridge to the real world. And that's our goal. And, and how he's asking us to get there, Jesus is to use love and forgiveness and that will to help us get rid of the anger right to to let go of the anger thoughts the attack thoughts and to really look at each one and to help remove them from our system and then replace that with the truth and the light and the love and when you do that for you denise you actually affect me you affect uh everyone over there where you are and you really affect the whole world of time and space um so thank you yeah no thank you it just it feels really powerful to connect and share this message you know um with whoever is there to listen yeah so thank you you're welcome um so what i'd like to ask you now I'll put you on the spot a little bit uh is to have you come back on once a month or once every six weeks to do a part of the course that that you that you find that will resonate with our subscribers, um, people who have been doing it for a little bit or have let it go and are trying to come back to it or seasoned course people. It doesn't really matter. It's all kind of holographically the same. It's all happening at the same time, right? So to be with us again. Yes. I would absolutely love that. Yeah. I, I love reading the course out loud. Like I love, I love actually saying the words out loud. I mean, I know not all of it is beautiful. Some of it is horrific when we read the descriptions of the ego, but yeah, it's just powerful, you know, reading yeah. it out loud. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like that to your point. Now the ego really is pretty horrible and <laughs> we're not going to deny that at all because that's an unworthy form of denial, but the ego really is uh, an insane thought and it's a, it's a, it's madness and so what we're trying to do is um, to recognize it and to use the course to help us um, go from yeah. the duality of the ego to the non-dual um, thought system of love and light and peace, yeah. which will bring us back to our source. Denise O'Brien yeah. uh, from Shannon, Ireland. Uh, you know, it was a holy encounter. Uh, when you reached out to me, it was definitely a holy encounter. And I'm so glad that you did. And um, any final words of wisdom that you might want to share with beings out there who might be, you know, having a tough time or new to mm. the course? Yeah, um, I would say, and this is something that's from the course as well, you know, from our brother, you know, Jesus, that you are worth the consistent effort, you know, just do not ever give up on yourself ever, you know however dark it gets, however confused this course might make you, however much you might listen to spiritual teachers and think, yeah, I'll never get that. Just do it anyway. You know, just, just keep going. That's what I would say. <laughs> well, I think that's great wisdom. It's just, you know, each and every day, one day at a time, each and every day, just yes. taking that responsibility 
uh, for your own. And that's really what it is, uh, taking your own personal responsibility for your mm-hmm. waking up. Uh, some Nobody can do it for you, right? You, nobody can come in and do it for you. You got to do it yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. And don't give up, you know, just don't like it. it because I, I, I'm proof that this, it works, you know, so yeah. Yes, ma'am. All right, Denise. Well, I'm going to take off my glasses. I'm going to find our stop button here okay. and I'll let you have the, I'll let you have the last word or two as I find the stop button for people. Okay. okay. Well, just, you know, blessings to all your listeners across the world. Um and yeah, looking forward to being back on here talking about the course and all things spiritual. So, yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. All right. Love you. God bless you.